Good evening. God bless you guys. I pray that all is well with everyone. Uh, so glad to see you this evening. Glad to be back in Bible study. Um, so, um, Deaconess Parker, let me know when we want to get started and we'll jump in it, all right? Okay. Good evening. Yeah. Um, we are ready. Good evening. Okay. Good, e Good, evening. Good evening, everyone. Welcome. Welcome back to Bible study for 2023. And We're you. Excited. Uh, mm -hmm. You can go ahead, Pastor. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. As previously stated, it's great to see you all uh, back again uh, for uh, our Bible study starting in 2023. Um, I know we were getting working to get the message out because uh, I don't think we uh, had an, a chance to announce it on Sunday. So uh, hopefully most people got the message that we were back up tonight. Uh, but if not, we are going to roll with what we got here. And uh, so we're just going to pray. And then after we pray, we're going to get started. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for life and health and strength. Uh, God, we give you glory for the great privilege and the honor of being in relationship with you. Uh, God, we pray that as we engage in this time of study, uh, that you would enlighten us, that you would uh, create in us clean hearts, make new right spirits within us, that we would be transformed by the renewing and the constant renewal of our mind, uh, by the power and the efficacy of your word, God, that you would move in us like only you can. Uh, open up the scriptures to our understanding, O oh God, and we'll be careful to give your name all glory, honor, and praise in the name of Jesus the Christ. Uh, that we pray this to God, our Father, through the power and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you in advance. Amen. 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 All right. So uh, we're going to just talk a little bit this evening uh, uh, about some of what we talked about on Sunday and just take a deeper look, a uh, deeper look at some of it. And... Um, and I'm going to just be, uh, as always, offering opportunities for uh, you guys to be involved and kind of talk back to me. Uh, so, uh, you know, just so you know, I I'll kind of be asking for moments where uh, you guys can share how you feel or how God is speaking to you or what you think about certain things that we're talking about this evening. All right. So uh, we're back in the book of John. and. Uh, we are at the fifth chapter. Uh, we're talking about the man who was sick at the pool of Bethesda. Uh, we're talking about uh, a man who had been stuck for a very long time. And we're talking about uh, how him being stuck impacted his everyday life, right? Uh one of the most difficult things that we recognize as truth and reality uh, within our society um, is that you have to be able to change your expectation uh, and your perspective oftentimes before you can reach goals that you set for yourself. Uh, that greatness is not an accident. It doesn't happen by mistake. You don't just stumble onto it, uh, but you expect it. You work for it. You put in effort for it. And oftentimes people find uh, individuals who can show them uh, things that they have not yet seen. You may refer to it as mentors. You may refer to it as a, a business partner. Uh, you may refer to it as accountability, accountability partner. Uh, whatever the case is, what you're trying to do uh, is change what you see so that it can influence what you expect. Uh, I think it's important that we understand that that part of humanity uh, is not uh, exclusive to our society in the current day nor generationally, right? Uh, but it's something that has been since the beginning uh, when uh, God is in conversation with the father of the faith, Abraham, 
uh, and he's attempting to get him to understand the enormity of what he's going to do in and through his life. He gives him things to look at. Uh, he tells him to look at the stars. And he said the same way that you won't be able to number the stars is the same way that you won't be able to number your seed. He he, he tells him, look, look at the sand of the earth. It's the same way that the sand cannot be numbered is the same way that your seed will not be able to be numbered. And so uh, we recognize uh, even early on what you see has a lot to do with what you get, right? Uh, it's one of the reasons why uh, oftentimes you try to take people out of negative environments and put them in more positive environments when they are attempting to grow, uh, just so that they can have a new point of reference, uh, so that they can know that it's something more for them to believe for, right? Right. Um, I've had testimonies and, and, and heard testimonies shared where, um, just in case you guys might not know, I'm, I'm a therapeutic counselor. I've been doing that for years now. And so one of the things I tell the uh, clientele that I work with is that I understand what people have told you that you are capable of for the majority of your life. I get it. Uh, I read through charts and I read through diagnosis and I understand all of those things. And one of the first things we talk about when we get together is the fact that I'm going to expand that expectation, uh, that I'm going to I'm going to uh, stretch them to do what they did not think was possible, uh, that we're going to defy some odds and we're going to uh, we're going to do some things that that and attain some things that they didn't believe was attainable before. Uh, and so then the very next thing I typically do is start positioning them to see examples of success that they can relate to, right? Uh, and so uh, I think it's important that we understand the importance of what we see, right? And so here, uh, when we're reading about uh, this man who is at the sheep, uh, uh, the, next to the sheep gate, the pool called Bethesda, uh, this is what it says in chapter five and verse three. Uh, it says, in this area, lay a great multitude of people who were blind and lame and paralyzed, sick folk, all waiting for the same thing. Uh, so all of these individuals are in the same position and all of these individuals are waiting on the same thing and that which they are waiting on, they are in competition to take hold of. It's not as if it is an abundance of it. And when it comes, it comes for everyone there. Uh, but I have to be able to beat uh, Deacon Avery into the water. And I have to be able to uh, able to beat uh, Deacon Parker into the water. And I have to be able uh, 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 to beat Deacon Pleasance into the water. And all of these different things is happening. Uh, and, and while I can relate to you and while I can befriend you temporarily, uh, I'm not in a position where I can open up completely to you because we are still at odds, because we are still in conversation competition, and I don't want my situation to be the same tomorrow as it was today, right? I don't want it to be the same. What I want to talk about tonight is adjusting our circle, changing our circle. Uh, culturally, Changing our circle presents certain challenges, especially in the African-American community, uh, because when we begin to change our circle, if, we're, if we change our circle, when we look successful, people start to tell us things like, you forget where you came from, right? Amen? All right? If we start to change our circle when we look like we're winning in life, uh, people tell us stuff like, oh, you think you all that. Uh, you 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 think you all that you 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 act high and mighty now, right? And they start to put all of these different labels on us because we're going about changing our circle. I want to submit to you uh, tonight that if you expect something in your life uh, to be transformed and be able to maintain that transformation, uh, 
you're going to have to do one or two things. Either you're going to have to change your circle or your circle is going to have to be willing to be elevated to the place where you're going. Uh, we can't run and do the same old, same old. We can't have the same conversations, right? Uh, and and I'm, I want to talk because, you know, even, even sometimes for church folk, conversations we have aren't uplifting. You know, we say stuff, we know people going through different things and we call and we start off talking about, I'm calling, calling to tell you, keep such and such in prayer. And, and 10 minutes in, it don't sound like we praying. It sound like we gossiping about what they got going on in their life, right? That's not empowering for us individually. That's not empowering for the body of Christ. And if we're going to be better, we've got to change how we interact with moments like that, Right. Uh, so the scripture says that every single one of these individuals who were in this area had the same types of problems and they were surrounded by each other. They were surrounded by each other. Uh, there was a study done some time ago uh, about housing and why affordable housing uh, in uh, North America was not as successful as they had planned for it to be initially. And one of the studies suggested uh, that because you put individuals who were all in the same boat within the same community. And so what happened was you put people in the community, one out of 10 families might have a father figure in the community, right? Uh, you didn't see a lot of educated individuals. You didn't see a lot of uh, professional individuals. What you saw was a lot of hurt. What you saw uh, was a lot of calamity. And because that was what they saw, they assumed that it was normal. Because they assumed that it was normal, they were more apt to accept what was normal. Uh, sometime later, another study was done, and what, what was learned from that study was that when you mix communities, uh, when you have some affordable housing with an, an, another more affluent community, now you put children in position where they can see two-parent homes if they, if they don't have one. Uh, now you see people in communities where they know that people take vacations as a family, right? Uh, now you see people in communities knowing what it means to retire from working, right? And live life after that. And a new normal is shaped. What happened at Bethesda was that what was supposed to be temporary became normal. And it became normal because I was surrounded by it. It became normal because uh, it's all I saw, right? Sometimes we got to change the things that we see. Sometimes we have to change what we're allowing our children and our grandchildren to see, right? It, 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 it can't be uh, that we're looking at the same thing over and over and over again, and we don't think it's going to impact what we feel is normal, right? We've got to be willing to change what we are looking at so that we can change our normal. The book of Philippians in the fourth chapter, in the eighth verse, it says, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue at all, if there be anything to clap about, if there's anything to shout about, if there's anything to be happy about, if there's anything to increase your faith, if there's anything to give you strength to feel like you can keep on pushing forward and persevere and press ahead. If there is anything, any of those things that exist, Philippians tells us to think on those things. But our reality is that it's difficult to think on those things if all I'm looking at is something else. Right. So, so then there becomes a very real struggle between uh, not giving up on the places that we used to call home, or not being looked at as a sellout in communities, or in relationships that we used to be in, and versus God elevating us to what we've been called to do and what we've been called to be. 
I'm going to pause there to see if you guys got any thoughts on what we talked about thus far. I'm going to open up the floor. If you got any thoughts, jump in. I, I, I always tell my kids that uh, if you want something, it's a crazy man. They keep on doing the same thing and looking for a different result. And we we have a tendency to do that. We never want to move the clock to the to one side. And I I always tell them, you want something different, you do something different. And and I I can't express it no different, you know. Yeah. So that's that's how I tell them. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much, Deacon Donald. And and the thing is, and it's not always easy to do something different, right? We know that. We've all lived long enough to know that do, it, it, it. Sometimes it might sound easy to do, but it's not always easy to do, right? But we've got to be willing to say, "Hey, uh, I want what I want so bad that if they talk about me when I do something different, they just won't have to talk this time." Uh, uh, that that if they gossip about what well, they just gonna have to the whatever because I want it too bad not to pursue it. I want yeah. it too bad to give up on it. I want it too bad to keep on settling for the status quo. I'm after something and I'm I'm gonna get it. Anyone else? The last part of that verse. Think on these things. I usually use the phrase in my own head, change my focus. Focus on something else. And if I can if I can if I can focus on all those things that are true, some of those things that are true, I can I can have a, a relationship. I can figure out where my focus needs to be rather than focusing on those things that are not true. Absolutely. Absolutely. Focus, change your focus, change your focus. Uh, sometimes uh, changing your focus means outrightly rejecting what you see in front of you right now. It just means that sometimes, God. Sometimes it means I know what they said about me. I reject that. I rebuke that. I'm not that. I'm not going to be that. Uh, and 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 I'm going to be what God said I'm going to be. Sometimes it means the outright rejection of the label that society has tried to put on you, that people have tried to put on you, right? I'm, I'm going to bring it real close, that some family members have tried to put on you, right? Because one of the toughest things is being around folks who known you all your life, right? They know every hill and every valley, every good day, every bad day, and they just can't get past what it was you struggled with or what it was you battled with. Now, the, the crazy part is they don't remember nothing about what they struggled with, but, but they, can't, they can't tend to get past what you struggled with. And at, at every turn, they're going to remind you of it, right? And you just with a steadfast resolve, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. He's a brand new creature. Old things are passed away. I know that you want to talk about what I used to do yesterday, but how about we talk about what God has done for me today? He woke me up in my right mind. He gave me the activity of my limbs. He made me a, a soldier for him, a peddling dispenser of the bread of life. And if nothing else on the day, I'm just glad to be saved. When people try to bring all that foolishness back up, I want to God that we have a testimony waiting on our lips for him, a testimony about how God has delivered and how God has healed and how God has set free and how God has restored and how I know that if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I would have been swallowed up. When folks try to bring foolishness in my direction, I've got a testimony for them. I got something good to say about God until you until next day. You ain't going to want to bring no foolishness my way no more because every time you come with some foolishness, you're going to get a mini sermon telling you something about the God who saved my life. Right, we have got to be focused, uh, like Deacon Avery said, uh, on on what God says He placed on the inside of us, instead of the scars that exist on the outside of us. I know that they're scars. I, I have them too. Everyone walking, talking, breathing, living has them. They're scars, right? 
But even your scars are a part of your testimony. Because your body was able to create a scar as proof that whatever you endured did not kill you and you are still alive. You're still here. And God's grace escorted you into a brand new day. God's grace allowed you to discover a brand new mercy. And so regardless of what happened yesterday, I'm going to give God praise in my present moment. And I am going to repeat what he has declared over my life rather than what my situation, my circumstance, or people suggest about me. Um, uh, the book of Isaiah, we're talking about focus and we're talking about what you look at, right? Uh, the book of Isaiah says, uh, he will keep you in perfect peace, 26 and 3, uh, whose mind is stayed on him. Whose mind is stayed on him. And sometimes that's where we stop. I want to take it just a little bit further and make sure we're not leaving out the rest of the verse. It says, because he trusteth in thee. Ah, uh, yeah. So, so, so how is it that Nate takes a grip and a hold of this perfect peace? I grab a better hold of this perfect peace by being determined to trust him. Yeah. I, I grab a hold of this perfect peace by not becoming so frustrated with the numerous vicissitudes of life that I began to try to do it my way instead of his way. Uh, I get a grip on this perfect peace when regardless of what I feel and even in spite of what I see, I repeat back to God what he said about me. What might that look like? That might look like sitting in the doctor's office, looking at him shake his head, and you saying to yourself, your word declares that with your stripes, I'm already here. Now, I'm not telling you to ignore your humanity, and I know that in moments like that is difficult, but, but, but I'm talking about a deep-seated resolve in the city of your soul that says God word, God's word matters most. That when I can't sleep at night, I might be tossing and turning, right? But I'm saying while I'm tossing and turning, God, I thank you for being chastised for my peace. And I know I might not be able to grab my hands on it right now, but I know that you were chastised for my peace. So I am going to sleep soundly. Yeah, I am going to rest when it's time to rest because you were chastised for my peace. All right. It's it's about it's about trusting him even when I can't trace him. It's about being able to see him in the midst of my difficulty, in the midst of my pain, in the midst of my frustration. The man at Bethesda was so engulfed with the multitude at Bethesda that when Jesus came up to him and began speaking. He almost missed his moment. I'm going to say it again because I think it's important. I don't want nobody to miss it. Jesus came to the middle of where he was. Jesus engaged. This ain't a situation where you got a blind person hollering, son of David, have mercy on him. This ain't that. This ain't, this ain't uh, Zacchaeus climbed up in the tree, just want to catch a glimpse of him. This ain't that. If I were really being real, I would ponder how long Jesus had been at the pool. How many other people totally missed it? Because they were so focused on the pain that lied ahead. Jesus engaged this man and he almost missed his moment because he could not release his pain. Uh, Deaconess Parker, uh, Jesus asked him, do you want to be well? It baffled me the first time I read this story. I couldn't believe it. 
I couldn't believe that the guy never answered. He never answered. He never gave, he never gave an answer to the question of whether or not he wanted to be well. Because he was so stuck in a place of pain. When Jesus asked him if he wanted to be well, he began to tell the story of his neglect and his pain and his loneliness. There, let me bring it into our society. There's some people who have battled relational issues throughout life and they might have broken hearts. And if Jesus were to come up to you and say, do you want to love again? This would be, uh, uh, if, 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 if that person were operating as the man at Bethesda, their reply might go something like this. Well, you don't understand what happened to me last time I tried that. You don't understand how they broke my heart. You don't understand how I was let down. You don't understand how, how, to, how, how I, I didn't sleep for weeks and months and, and uh, how I'm still getting over. I, I got to go to counseling. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I got anxiety fooling around with them and all this stuff. And Jesus said, I didn't ask you that though. If Jesus were to walk up to you and he were to say, uh, do, do you want to be the entrepreneur I called you to be in the kingdom? Well, you don't understand how many times I tried to launch out in the deep business wise. You don't understand how many times I tried to put my hand on my dreams and my ambitions. You don't understand how much I lost. You don't understand. I almost lost my house. I almost lost my car. I almost lost my family behind chasing a dream. But I didn't ask you that. I, 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 didn't, I didn't ask you. Do you want to have a better relationship with your children? Well, you just don't understand if, if you, the things that we went through when I was growing up and the things that he said or she said and the things that I said and and, and we ain't talked in years and they hardly ever let me see my grandkids or my, my I just came in. I didn't ask you that. I asked you if you wanted it to be better. How many times in our life is Jesus asking us if we want something to be better and rather than giving him an honest reply, we begin to tell him about the pain we feel from the fact that it's not better right now. How many, how many times are we going to miss the moment because we're stuck in the moment. I'm going to say that again. I don't want you to miss it. How many times are we going to miss the moment our interaction with God's grace and mercy and restoration and compassion in our lives because we're stuck in the moment? Because we're unable to to feel or to see Jesus in the moment. Uh, do I have a question? I thought I saw a hand. Did I see a hand? Uh, yes, sir, you did. <clears throat> this is uh, Marshall Wright. God bless how you. you. Doing, how you doing this okay. evening? All right, how are you? I'm fine. Uh, and, and what you're speaking of now, um, in that particular moment that you're going through these things, that seems to be the one that you can have the most control over is the one that you're going to go with. And it's very difficult to think about what God has brought you through, what you're going through, how he has delivered you from so many other things. When you have that pressing amount of, of things that are facing you right at that moment, yeah. it's not easy to just switch. It's not. And then, and you're more comfortable. Sometimes people can use that or we use that as a blocking mechanism. You know, as long as we can have that in front, then that keeps us from going further, you know, and it's easier to to handle that. And you, you think more about how you can maneuver through a situation than you can if you're willing to just give it up to the Lord and let him work it out for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree. I completely agree, Deacon Wright, uh, that, that, that there are times where it is easier for us to stay stuck 
than to be have to have to trust God again. Because sometimes we say to ourselves, trusting means I got to open up my heart again for the opportunity of being let down. Uh, trusting means I got to open up myself again for faith uh, when I know I'm battling doubt right this moment. Uh, so trusting again is not easy. It's not easy. And, ab and absolutely, sometimes uh, I'm, I'm looking down, sometimes those moments do become a way, a way of life if we're not careful. We can become stuck in being stuck. And individuals will be around us and say, hey, uh, you still in that same place? Well, I just, I, I don't know how to believe my way out of this because it hurts so bad. I want to read something to you uh, right quick. Uh, I want to read something to you. Uh, this is what it says. Uh, I am the man that has seen affliction. Mm -hmm. By the rod of his wrath, he have led me and brought me into darkness. Mm-hmm but not into light. Surely against me is he turned and he turneth his hand against me all day. Mm. Now, if, if if you feel like this is sounding bad, just nod your head with me. So I know mm. I'm not the only one that feel like this sound bad. Mm. This, 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 this is sounding rough right here. Uh, the, the writer then says, my flesh and my skin mm. he has made old. He's mm. broken my bones. Mm -hmm. built against me and mm -hmm. compassed me with gall and travail. Mm -hmm. He set me in dark places mm -hmm. as they that be dead of old. Mm -hmm. He has hedged about me and I can't get out. In other words, the writer said, I'm stuck. I, mm -hmm. I tried to get, we're talking about being stuck, right? Here we are mm -hmm. we're talking about being stuck in this mentality where mm -hmm. we're Sometimes it might be a lifelong thing. It's, it's hard to get out. The writer says, I'm stuck. I cannot get out. My chains are heavy. Uh -huh. When I cry and shout out, it seems like he shutteth out my prayer. Uh -huh. It says he has enclosed my ways and hewn stone. He has made my paths crooked. This is uh -huh. rough. Uh -huh. Deacon, this Parker, this is rough. Deacon Avery, this, this is rough. It says, yeah. he was unto me a bear, lying in wait, a lion in the secret places. He yeah. has turned aside all my ways. And, and the writer just goes on and on and on and on. I mean, it gets real bad, guys. He talk about he broke my teeth and, and mm -hmm. I, can't, I can't eat the same way. I can't sleep the same way. I can't live the same way. And all of these things, this writer says, and, and, and we would never guess in a million years. And not only the same writer, but watch uh -huh. the same uh -huh. chapter, uh -huh. the same chapter of the word of God. This same uh -huh. writer goes on to say this about his situation. Remembering my affliction and my misery. Lord yeah. have mercy. Yeah, yeah. I'm about to get excited. The, the worm would in gall. He said, my soul has them still in remembering. These uh -huh. things I recall to my mind. Uh -huh thought about when I was stuck and I thought about when I was broken and I thought about when I cried all night and I thought about when I was so stuck, I believe there was no way out. He says, I thought about these things and I had hope. What is, wait a yeah. minute. How does this make, <laughs> how does thinking about those things give me hope? This is why I have hope because it was because of the Lord's mercies that I was not consumed. While I was where I was, I should have never made it out of where I was. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I need somebody to get excited about that part. While I was where I was, I should have never made it out of where I was. The, the enemy messed around and made a mistake when he let me see today. Because I know I should have never made it out of yesterday. Yeah. Know that it's because of the Lord's mercies I made it out of yesterday. Yeah. I know His grace kept me. I know His mercy ushered me through travail and through trial in my life. I know His compassion found me where I was. Jeremiah laments in the third chapter of the book of Lamentations. He said, I remember my affliction and my misery. The worm wouldn't go. My soul has them still in remembrance. These things I recall to my mind. Therefore, yeah. I hope that it is a it is of the Lord's mercies that I am not consumed. 
Lord's mercy that I am not consumed. My sister said earlier, she said, if you're not careful, it can become a lifestyle. I'm going to help yeah. you how to get out of that lifestyle. Yeah. Start thinking of the fact that he woke you up in the middle of your tears. Start yeah. thinking of the fact that he kept you in your right mind, mm -hmm. even if you almost lost everything. Yeah. Start thinking about the fact that when you were driving, considering taking yourself off of the edge of the bridge, some kind of way you ended up at home that night and you don't yeah. even know how you got there. When you don't, when you drunk so much that you had no idea how you got on what interstate and what road took you to your final destination, God's grace took you there. And if it had not been for his mercies, hallelujah. Yeah. Lord, have mercy. Thank Lord, you. Thank you. Lord, have mercy. Yes, yeah. ma'am. And I was think, you know, you can rehearse those things over and over in your mind. And the enemy can tell you to keep playing it. Press that button and play it one more time. Right. And you right. have to trust God and say, no, it ends here. It yes, ends right now. I will not replay the things that happened to me in the past. I'm going to press toward the mark of the high calling. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, Thank you for listening. <laughs> yes, sir. For me, uh, I think we all, like you said, we all had the scars coming up. And for me, with all my scars, I forgave, but I didn't forget. Right. Uh, and I knew that there was a God when I was young. Right. I didn't know it for myself, but I knew in my situations and what I went through, I always seen a future. Yes, sir. That was brighter than where I was at. Hallelujah. And I pressed forward knowing my situation, it could be better if I kept on moving forward and believing in a God which at that time I didn't know. Right. And today I can look back. Like I said, I don't forget. I forget. I look back and I can see how he brought me and yeah. I can use my testimonies and what I went through to encourage and let people know that there is a God and you can overcome and you continue to move forward. That's, that's just the way I, it, it happened for me. Amen. Amen. Amen, Deacon Parker. Thank you so much for sharing. And 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 I want to I want to highlight what he said, guys. He said, he said, I had scars. All of us do. He said, I forgave, but I didn't forget. You want to know what the, I, I was uh the other day, well, a little a little while ago, summertime, I was at a pool with Nehemiah, my daughter, and uh she had looked at one of my arms. I have a scar on one of my arms. She said, Daddy, what what happened there? Mm -hmm. And I began to tell her a story. I was a kid and I was on a swing set and there was an old rusty nail that I didn't know was uh, sticking out of the side of the swing set. And I went up high and I came down to the side and I ended up running to the nail. The nail grabbed my arm and took it, you know, so mm -hmm. it was a pretty bad scar. And uh, and so I'm telling her the story and, and, and she said, wow, that happened when you were just a little kid. I said, yeah, it happened when I was just a little kid. She said, you still remember it really good. I said, because I still got the scar. Mm -hmm. That's right. right. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, our scars uh, help us to remember moments in our lives that we didn't think we could have got through, but God, yeah, yeah, right? God. Our scars help us tell testimonies of yeah. times in our existence where I almost gave up, but yeah. God, Praise but God. God. Oh God, uh, our scars tell the, the tale uh, uh, that, that I couldn't have made it on my own, but God, right? Uh, th these, these are a part of our journey. And like Deacon Park was saying, because, you know, I want to be clear. I want to be clear because sometimes we say things um, 
and, and worship communities uh, that don't merge with people's humanity real good. We say, we say, let it all go. Forgive and forget. Don't think about it no more now. Hold on. <laughs> I just want to be real now. Uh, I'm going to help somebody. Uh, that whole forgive and forget and, and not ever remember, that's not always realistic. Uh, now, what I will say is forgive and love. Love. But me loving you does not mean I have to be foolish enough to let you hurt me again. Oh, I wish somebody would help me. Uh, me. Me loving you, I can love you and not kick you out of the theater of my life. I can love you and have my nicest, most kindest usher in the theater of my life come to you on the front row and escort you to the back row of the balcony. I didn't kick you out completely. You still in the theater of my life. Your placement has just changed. I think so much of the things that we face in our life is that we go through things and we experience things. And when people show us who they are at that season of their life, we don't believe them. We don't believe that's who they are. Uh, we, 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 we believe that there's something different. We believe that, but they showed us who they were and, and we refuse to move them out of the position that they were in. And we keep getting hurt over and over and over and over and over again. And now we're having conversations with God. Well, I forgave him and you let him hurt me anyway. God, wait, hold on now. I gave you wisdom. And I, and, and if I told you, you asked for it, I give you understanding as well. I don't want you to put yourself in a position where that individual continues to hurt you in that way. You can love them from a distance. Y'all understand what I'm saying? You can love them from a distance. Uh, anyone want to share any thoughts on that? But Pastor, I was just thinking about that, um, where we at in the, in the verse. And I just was wondering how many times, because it really didn't say that this guy and Jesus was at the well together, was there at the water together. And and I was still wondering um, how many times did this guy look up and didn't even thought about Jesus at this right there. He was so busy worrying about the angel trouble in the water, he looked all over top of Jesus and, and Jesus could have been standing right there beside him. It sort of puzzled me on another thing was, how did Jesus, he just, he just came there and just stood there for him at this particular time. Right. Now, I just was trying to figure out that Jesus figured that this guy had enough, had enough, you know what I mean? Is it time for me to say something to him? Is it time for me to, because of his uh, depression and his actions, that carried him all the way to the bottom, that he really could recognize who Jesus was. If the first time he, they were out there together, he might not even uh, realize who Jesus was because yeah. he he hadn't been beat down with it enough. Right. right. When people did show up, you can honestly sit there and pull yourself out. Because uh, a lot of times I, I have been in the position when I first uh, got the way I was, um, I, uh, I I didn't even want to talk to anybody. I was there. I didn't even really want to talk to the doctors because I felt like they were not trying to help me. I felt like I was being a guinea pig to somebody's stuff. But then as time go on and the depression and the hurt and all of this stuff settled in and you halfway can walk and the off riders get you and you be like, Somebody gotta help. Yeah. And you are actually are actually being recognizing when somebody came up to say, well, maybe we can do something about this. I jump and says, I'm recognizing maybe you can. What can we do together to get this together? But instead of overlooking them with an attitude of I can't do it. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. That's that's what I was wondering in Absolutely. this particular group. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you so much for sharing. And the thing is, it never tells us how many times he ran into Jesus. Right. And then 
uh, what we'll talk about, we're going to talk about this uh, in the upcoming weeks, is he didn't even know that it was him when it when he got healed. He had no idea. He still didn't recognize him. He still didn't recognize him. And 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 the thing is, uh, you know, I think sometimes un, unbeknownst to us, we do that in our everyday life. And, and we don't do it so much because, uh, you know, we're bad or, or, or anything like that. We do it just because we're human, right? Uh, so what I would probably uh, compare something like this to is if, if we had been praying and we had been believing for a healing service, and we're going to have this healing service. And we we three months out from this healing service. And, you know, people are people got things they need to be healed from. And and, and somebody who's waiting on this healing service is is uh, at a doctor's appointment one day, just seated beside a random person. And that random person offers to pray for their healing. And 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 we might miss it because we say, no, nah, nah, I'm good. I'm waiting on this healing service, <laughs> you know. And, and, and God has positioned this individual, right, uh, uh, to step in and to be what it is that you've been waiting on for so long. So, so, so it's just making sure that we're seeing the big picture, right, uh, and, and allowing God uh, to be God, right, and allowing God to do what only God can do. Again, I'm going to go back to uh, Jeremiah right quick. Um, and then I'll open up the floor before we before we uh, before we pray out. But Jeremiah said uh, uh, he said it was because his mercies I was not consumed because his compassions refused to fail. They failed not. He, he said he said, and again, guys, if you get a chance, you know, uh, read just read through you go Lamentations one through three up to this point, and then after he says all this, he goes back to lamenting. But he broke in the middle of it. He broke in the middle of it. He said, because his compassions fail not, they're new every morning, and great is your faithfulness. What? After all the brokenness and after all the pain and after all the frustration I've dealt with in my life, to, to, to come to myself and to realize as difficult as it has been, Let's be real with ourselves. There are people who have gone through far less and didn't make it out. Come on, somebody. There, there are people who have had far smaller troubles and trials than you and didn't have the faith and the stick to and the wherewithal to find their way clear. So it is because of his mercies that we're not consumed. It is because the fact that his compassion is not failing. And it is because his faithfulness. I know we cried a lot of tears. We got up the next day and kept moving forward. God's still faithful. We had a lot of pain. God's still faithful. Had some moments in life that just baffle you and confuse. Why me? God's still faithful. God's still faithful. And so again, it's about changing our focus, right? It's about making sure that we're focusing on what's lovely and pure and of good report, right? Uh, it's about making sure that we're keeping our mind stayed on him so that he can keep us in a perfect peace. And when we find ourselves in a very real place where we feel like, hey, I need to talk about some of the stuff that's going on in my life. That's not always a bad thing. Jeremiah did it in Lamentations. He did it. But don't forget, even in the midst of all of that, you've got to pause to give God praise for the fact that you're still standing. You've got to pause to give God praise for the fact that you're still here. And you've got to pause to give God praise for the fact that he's still God. And he still sits on the throne. And he's still a good, good father. And I'm still loved by him. Amen. 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 Uh, did anyone, anybody, anyone want to share anything before we, uh, before we pray? 
I want to thank you all again for uh, being here this evening. Uh, hey, Pastor. Yes, sir. Bro, Steve, what's up, man? Hey, good to see you. I just, I want to say thank you for opening our eyes because of our scars and trials and tribulations that we didn't realize we were stuck. And, but the good thing is, like you say, we, we're we still here. And it just, it helps me to, to realize that, you know, I'm not the only one that's, that's feeling this or going through it. It's, 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 it's other people, but keeping our eye, keeping our eyes on God. And like you said, God is still on the throne. God is still in charge. So, so thank you for that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your heart, brother. Absolutely. And, and, and you're not alone and we're not alone and we're walking this journey together. And, and that's one of the things I, I, I'm, I'm believing God to continue to strengthen us together as the body of Christ so that we can come together and share our hearts and 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 share where where how we're working and how God is moving and how He's healing and how He's restoring and and I, I mean guys like if we think about it for a moment there had to be something about when Jesus came down from the Mount of Transfiguration there was something about that Father that Father looked at him whose son was was vexed with all these devils and demons and he said none of your disciples could heal them. I've been down here. They, they having trouble with this. And Jesus said, do, well, do you believe? He said, I do. But what I'm praying for in the body of Christ is that we won't be so absolutely set on always hiding our butts. Mm -hmm. Right? Because right. everybody has them. Everybody has them. He says, I believe, but help my unbelief. There's a part of me that does struggle. There's a part of me that is torn because of the things I've experienced, because of what I went through, because of how often I cry. But God is God enough to meet you right where you are when you trust him enough to tell him right where you are. Amen. Amen. So, thank you. Thank you again, Brusty. I appreciate you, man. Thank you so much for sharing your heart. God bless you. God, God bless you. Hallelujah. Anyone else want to share? Anyone else? Hallelujah. 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 I just think that um, um, we all have to realize that all of us, all of us, all of us fall victim to the same thing. All of us. This is not a um, thing that rests with people on the back pew. This rests with people throughout the whole church, the whole church family. And the sooner we leave the pride that keeps us from acknowledging it, the better, the, the quicker we'll see Jesus digging uh, pleasant who's standing right there with us. That, that, pride, that pride is really something else. Thank you. Good teaching. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Deacon Avery. I appreciate it. You know, thank you for sharing your heart. And and, and the thing is, too, uh, it, it'll help us get over the pride. But it, what it also do is help us trust each other. Amen. Yeah. It'll build our personal relationships. When, when I know that I can talk... To, to my brother, I can go to Steve and say, hey, man, I'm 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 battling this, man. I'm still I need you to pray with me. I just need you to believe with me. You know what I'm saying? When 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 women can get together and pray about things and and and, and couples can get together and believe for someone else's covenant to be strengthened. And 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 our what happened, what happen is our kids will start seeing like that uh, stuff like that happen. Before you know it, they'll be praying for each other, too. They'll be fasting for each other, too. Right. This is, this is what we are as the body of Christ, right? Jesus told Peter, he said, Satan has desired to have you so that he could sift you as wheat, but I prayed for you that your faith wouldn't fail. And when thou art converted, strengthen your brother. Mm -hmm. That's the part. 
That's the part. So, but but in order to do that, right, we've got to we've got to demonstrate the fact that we're trustworthy and not doing like I said earlier when we first started, calling, talking about we're gonna pray for somebody and then turn into a gossip session. No, like let's love each other and let's remember what God bought us from. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you all so much for being locked in and logged on tonight. Uh, I, I'm, I'm excited to be back uh, doing Bible study, sharing, and having you guys to share. I really, I really do get excited when we, we are engaged in sharing together because iron sharpens iron. Uh, and, and the more uh, that we can continue to do that, the the, the more we'll grow together. Yes. So thank you all so much. And and I want to I want to submit a challenge to you. Uh mm -hmm. I know again, uh we, we'll take this one to be on us for not getting the announcement out in time for Bible study restarting this week. But this is a great opportunity for in-house evangelism. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let the church let the church say amen. This is amen. a great opportunity for in-house evangelism. So if you got a brother or sister in Christ that's not up here tonight, shoot them a text message. Tell them how good we ate tonight. Make it sound good. Y'all know how it is when you go to the five-star <laughs> restaurant. And you got the carry-out box that you had in the back of your refrigerator because you don't want nobody in the house to see it. <laughs> Tell them how good we ate tonight. And then, then, then let them know, I don't want you to miss it next week. Please make yeah. sure. Please make sure. Yeah. That, because the, the more of us come together, uh, uh, God will move in, in awesome ways and expand the reach within the body of Christ. Amen. 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 Uh, so let's pray. Father, we give you glory for your presence in this place. We thank you for our time together, God. We thank you for your word. Uh, we thank you for the revelatory word of God, and we thank you that we are strengthened and empowered thereby. Now, Father, as we depart from this place, but never from your presence, allow no evil to befall us, neither let any plague come near our tent. Thank you, great God, that you are for giving your angels charge over us to keep us in all of our ways. Father, continue to stand with all of those who have lost a loved one as of late. Father, we continue to pray for the Heath family. We continue to pray for the Williams family, God, and we just thank you for uh, uh, holding our hearts in your hands hand, Father, everybody uh, who's hurting in this season, God, we pray that you'll continue to be the lifter of their head and that you'll continue to give them a peace that surpasses all understanding. We love you for it and we bless you for it. In Jesus' name, we pray this, God, our Father, through the power and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Lord, we thank you in advance. Amen. 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 Love you guys. God bless you. Good night, everyone. Happy, Good night. Birthday, Brittany. Happy birthday, Brittany. <laughs> oh, she, she didn't have a call, but I'm going to tell her you said it. Okay. Hey, <laughs> Brittany. Sign back there, though. Happy birthday. I'm going to let her know. Y'all. Love y'all. Mm -hmm. well, okay. Happy birthday. Good, good night. Good, good night. night. Good night.